The Signal of Liberty newspaper was the only anti-slavery newspaper published in Michigan in the decades before the Civil War. Therefore, it was extremely important to the citizens of this state in providing a way of looking at national, state, and local issues as they affected slavery or as slavery affected them. In 1836, men, they were all men, uh, from across the state of Michigan, which was only sparsely settled at that time, held an anti-slavery meeting in Ann Arbor, where we are. And one of their goals was to sway people to have an anti-slavery stance. And in order to do so, they felt they should have a newspaper because they could disseminate information which would convince them that slavery was a wrong and an evil and it was actually hurting the country. Out of that meeting, and remember this is a year before Michigan's actually a state, out of that meeting came publication of a newspaper. And it was mostly um, led by two men, Theodore Foster, uh, who came from New England. His father was a U.S. Senator, and Reverend Guy Beckley, who came from Vermont. They managed to keep it going from 1841 through 1848, and that's really amazing when you look at the history of newspapers in this country. In 1842, we still have the newspaper being published by the Executive Committee of the Anti-Slavery Society, and, and Sullivan, uh, who was the printer out of um, Jackson County, Michigan is still the printer. That's going to change and Beckley and Foster are going to take over uh, within a short time of managing the newspaper. This newspaper has an article here about uh, written describing Frederick Douglass and it's actually when he was first starting to speak and what it was like to be a slave and introduced many people who had a biased viewpoint that a slave could not necessarily be well educated to hear these words spoken by a man who had recently been enslaved and how eloquently he spoke. We also have in this uh, issue um, articles about supporting the Liberty Party. The Liberty Party would become the national party uh, electing people for President of the United States. The person who ran in the 1840s for President of the United States was James Burney, and he lived in the state of Michigan. Um, he ran very unsuccessfully, I might add, because the Liberty Party did not have a lot of support. And the main reason for that, in the opinion of Beckley, was because they only had one issue on their platform, and that was ending slavery. Another really important part of the newspaper is this. They always had um, um, a, some poetry. And this one was by Whittier, John Greenleaf Whittier. He published a number of poems that related to um, slavery and the sadnesses connected with those enslaved. You'll see in this issue March 6, 1843, that now Foster and Beckley are the publishers of the newspaper. They will have taken over until 1847 uh, when Beckley resigned and Foster then continued for some, t uh, at least another year. They generally had publishing information begging for subscriptions or wood or chickens or anything they could get in exchange for the newspaper. Poetry, here's a poem again related to a slave by Longfellow. Uh, they then included um, national news and here we the Michigan Temperance Society. Um, here they have uh, doctrines at Washington. So the national news was very important to include. Then they would sometimes follow that with uh, discussions or alternative viewpoints that might, of, of an opposing view. The Underground Railroad had become quite effective by the 1840s. 
and certainly it got to be very effective in the 1850s. And it was proven not only by the Northerners making claims, but by people in slaveholding states going to their legislature and saying, help us retrieve our property, quote, property. And so here we have an article about the Missouri legislature going to Congress and saying to them that uh, under the existing laws of Canada and the treaties between Great Britain and the United States, it is impossible to recover a slave who has once escaped to the Canadian shore. And of course, what is the fastest way to get across but from Detroit, uh, across the Detroit River to get to Canada, which was why Michigan played such an important role in the Underground Railroad. Um, so here we have them showing themselves to this whole country that this issue had become a serious problem and that slaves weren't these contented folk as they claimed. They were escaping permanently from a life they no longer wanted to lead. They wanted their freedom and they showed it to the world. So this newspaper said, look, here it is getting toward the end of publication. And it's 1847. At this time, Beckley has bowed out of publishing. He had written personal letters where he said that it was just too great a hardship. He had many children and they were not getting enough to live on because he was putting so much money into the publication of the newspaper. Um, sadly, he died suddenly very shortly after this. Um, so Theodore Foster um, continued publishing. He found someone else to work with him, but this is the next to last publication that we have here. Uh, so it did not, it was not able to continue without uh, enough financial support. It, it was very effective in, in reaching thousands of people. There were at least a couple thousand, over 2,000 people at one point subscribing to this newspaper. Uh, and like other newspapers, it uh, opened an avenue for people to um, lead discussions in their own communities. It also upheld the Liberty Party and notified people where there would be Liberty Party meetings, anti-slavery society meetings. It was the way to reach people, the citizens who needed to be involved and wanted to be involved.